Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. I've started adding Organifi's unflavored collagen into my food every single day. It's sourced from four real food ingredients, including pasture-raised cows, wild-caught fish, eggshell membranes, and organic bone broth protein. It helps replenish and rebuild the body's most abundant protein, and you'll enjoy the benefits of healthy skin, hair, and strong nails. You can easily integrate it into your day as I have by adding it into your morning coffee or your favorite stew, meal, or dessert, or into one of your other favorite Organifi beverages such as Glow. Organifi's superfood blends offer plant-based nutrition and high-quality ingredients. Each blend is science-backed to craft the most effective doses, and they are such a great replacement for those sugary snacks you're tempted to reach for in the afternoon or late at night before bed. The best part is that you can experience Organifi's high-quality superfoods without breaking the bank. Head over to www.organifi.com slash bestofyou and use code bestofyou for 20% off your entire order. That's www www.organifi.com slash best of you. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Allison, and I'm so glad you're here to discover what brings out the best of you. This podcast is all about breaking free from painful patterns, mending the past, and discovering our true selves in God. I can't wait to get started as we learn together how to become the best version of who we are with God's help. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of the Best of You podcast. I am so glad you're here this week for another episode where we're talking about how to name, frame, and brave our way through areas in our lives that bring up dissonance inside of us, a feeling of inner tension, these areas that have potential for good on some level and also some potential for harm. And in today's episode, we're talking about the dissonance of our limiting beliefs. As you know, and as I write about in I Shouldn't Feel This Way, our minds can be used brilliantly to help us solve the problems that we face, and our minds can also be used to dupe us into self-sabotage, into thinking traps, and into staying stuck in negative thought patterns. So our minds are a crucial component to our overall health. They're not the only component, and I want to be clear, we are minds and emotions and a nervous system and a body and all of these parts of us have to work together to create the kind of melody of our lives. But in today's episode, we're going to focus on our mindset. And to cue up this conversation that I had with our guest today, I want to differentiate between what it means to be a critical thinker versus what it means to hold limiting beliefs. So what's the difference? Thinking critically involves trying to assess and analyze information, consider multiple perspectives, and evaluate evidence to make informed decisions or judgments. You're questioning assumptions. You're examining biases. You're assessing the validity of what you're hearing. It could not be more important in this world today to become a critical thinker. A limiting belief is a belief that constrains you or holds you back. These are beliefs that are typically negative and self-defeating, and they can stem from our past experiences, from the ways we were conditioned. Maybe our teachers told us we weren't good enough, or maybe in our peer groups, we felt like we were less than, or we have a fear of failure. These limiting beliefs come out as, I'm not good enough, or I'll never be successful, and they prevent us from pursuing opportunities or taking risks that could lead to growth and fulfillment. So you want to be someone who thinks critically, right, who evaluates 
what's coming your way, whether it's what other people are telling you, whether it's what you're hearing in the news or on social media, you want to evaluate the truth of what you're hearing in any given situation. Someone who's a critical thinker approaches information with an open mind, with curiosity, who asks questions, who seeks to understand and who gets underneath the assumptions and maybe even the motivations of the person who's presenting information. Someone who holds limiting beliefs, on the other hand, would accept information or viewpoints without questioning them. I'm not smart enough, so I just have to accept whatever these other people are telling me. A critical thinker makes decisions based on careful analysis, weighs the pros and cons, considers potential consequences, seeks outside opinions and relevant information. You strive to make an informed decision based on multiple perspectives, right? Somebody who resorts to limiting beliefs just makes decisions based out of fear, self-doubt, or negative assumptions about themselves or their abilities. They create self-imposed barriers. I can't do this for myself, so I just have to blindly trust other people. And it hinders your ability to pursue opportunities or find real meaningful solutions. And finally, critical thinkers actively engage in self reflection and continue to learn, to expand knowledge, to expand skills, to expand perspectives. They are open to feedback and constructive criticism, and they use that as an opportunity to grow and improve. Whereas if you are trapped by limiting beliefs, instead of looking for opportunities to grow and develop, limiting beliefs can create a self-perpetuating cycle of missed opportunities and even self-sabotage. I'll just never get it right. And we give up or let go or just resort to letting other people dictate our opinions of our own selves. I want you to become critical thinkers, people who think critically about the information you take in, who get second opinions, who get third opinions, who analyze the data, who consider underlying assumptions and motivations. And I want you to move away from becoming people who are limited by negative self-talk. I'm just not smart enough. I just have to assume that those people know better, that other people are wiser. And those limiting beliefs don't lead you to the best that God has for you. Our guest today talks about these limiting beliefs in his brand new book called Think This, Not That, 12 Mind Shifts to Break Through Limiting Beliefs and Become Who You Were Born to Be. Dr. Josh Axe is a doctor of natural medicine and a clinical nutritionist. He founded one of the largest functional medicine clinics in the U.S. and runs the popular health website, draxe.com, where you can find recipes, natural remedies, videos, nutrition advice, and fitness tips. Dr. Axe is a board-certified doctor of natural medicine. He earned his doctorate from Palmer College and his Master of Science in Organizational Leadership from Johns Hopkins University. His brand new book, Think This, Not That, is a New York Times bestselling book, and he is here today to talk to us about limiting beliefs and about how we can embark on a more holistic journey to health. Please enjoy today's conversation with Dr. Josh Axe. I'm so thrilled to have you here today to get to know you. I know we have mutual folks in common just through your work in Nashville. I love the emphasis that you put on this holistic healing. I really want to get into that today. But I also love that you have this new book out all about limiting beliefs. Could we start there, Dr. Axe? I'm just curious about in this journey, as you've been a healer, as you've taken a deep dive into all these holistic ways of healing, when did you realize the power of mindset, the power of our minds as a part of that? Well, you know, I, I think there, there's been a couple instances that really opened my eyes to it. And I would say that uh, one was when I was back in high school, another was my mom battling cancer, and another was I was diagnosed with a spinal infection not that long ago and almost was told I may never walk again. It was so bad. So, but going back when I, the actual, I would say, inception of it was. Uh, when I was in high school. So I remember going in freshman year of high school, I was in English class and I had a teacher ask me to stay after class. And she said, Josh, what do you want to do after high school? And I said, well, I want to be a doctor. And I said that because the year before my mom had gone through chemotherapy and I remember she had lost her hair and just thinking, I want to help people like my mom not, not have to fight cancer in this way and heal. 
and she laughed out loud when I told her I wanted to be a doctor. She said, you know, she said, with your grades, you'll never get into med school. She said, my daughter barely got into Ohio State Med School with a 3.8. She said, you've got a D minus in this class and you got an F on this paper. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. You need to try harder. And for me, you know, looking back as a 13, you know, 14 year old, I didn't really know a whole lot better. So I just thought basically the thing I walked away with was I'm not smart. Yeah. And then a couple of weeks later, my mom brought me to see a, another doctor and I got diagnosed with ADHD. And so then, and, and they're talking about me like I'm not in the room. And I remember thinking to myself, gosh, not only am I not smart, I'm like medically not smart. There's, there's something wrong with me. And so in high school, I really just stopped. I didn't really try much. I always had a trouble paying attention, but I just really didn't try. The only reason I graduated was I just knew if I didn't graduate, my dad would just be irate. So that was like my motivation yeah. was not getting my dad too upset. And I graduated with a C minus and barely graduated. And then I applied to a bunch of colleges, got denied by most, but one college, actually it was the University of Kentucky, they said, you're not accepted, but if you come and do summer classes and you perform well and you get an average above a 3.0, we'll let you in. And I had a lot of other things that I had, so I think that's probably why they even gave me any shot at all. And so I said, you know what? I really don't wanna be the kid that stays home and goes to community college or doesn't graduate. So I said, I'm gonna try. And I had English 101 again for college. That was the first class I took. And so I said, I'm really going to try on this paper. And I tried. And the teacher, it was like deja vu. Her name was Miss Williams. She said, Josh, can you stay after class? And I thought, oh, no, not this again. And she said, what's your major? And I said, well, I haven't picked a major yet. And she said, well, I want to let you know that I think you're a really talented writer. I think you should consider being an English major or a journalism major. And she said, you actually got the highest grade on the class in this paper. And just great job. And I said, okay. And you know what? The thing I'll say, Dr. Allison, was for me, it was, it was like having a memory transplant or a mindset transplant. I mean, I went from believing for four years, I'm not smart and I, I can't do it, to thinking, wow, somebody told me that I'm talented and I could be great at something. And it, lit it literally radically changed my life in, in a major way. And I think about this. You know, if I wouldn't have heard said that or somebody along the way said that, and then eventually I went to, you know, become a doctor. I went to Johns Hopkins. I graduated there with a 3.9 GPA and wrote some books, started, you know, I did some things. And I wouldn't have done any of those things if I would have held on to this limiting belief. And so for me, I started realizing my beliefs and my mindset are so incredibly important. And we know that this is true. Everything from the scientific literature we see you know, like the Rosenthal effect and, you know, you know, psychology literature makes me think about that. Or the Bible, of course, talks about as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But I really took these things that I learned and actually, you know, from there, it really helped me in helping patients because I realized that if I had a teacher tell me something that I can, a lot of these patients that I took care of, their doctors would tell them things like here, for instance, they, they would give them limiting beliefs like, hey, it's just genetics. There's nothing you can do about this, or you have to be on this pill the rest of your life. Yeah. And it really limited the patient. So when I started working with patients, I realized I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to let them know, listen, your body has an amazing capacity to heal. And so it really you know, is, I guess that's sort of the inception and one of the ways I, I carried on with it. Yeah. I love that you're bringing that in for too long. In our culture, there's been this kind of dichotomy between the hard science of medicine and then the quote unquote softer science of what I do in the field of psychology. And I mean, you and I both know that there is no divide like that. They all come together, the mind, the heart, the soul, the body, they're all integrated. God made us with a nervous system. It links it all together. And we need all the different tools, but it's really hard to find someone when you're hurting, whether you're sick physically, whether you're struggling with limiting beliefs, to find someone to kind of bring it all together. So tell me a little bit about how that evolved for you. You started out in functional medicine, and I've heard you talk about the story with your mom's cancer. You had some sort of red flags, sort of I'm not sure the pharmaceutical industry is really giving us everything that we really need. Tell me about that evolution for you. How did you land where you are today, where you're really integrating all of these different things, including what we believe? Yeah. You, you know, I think for me, it happened pretty early on. And I'll, I'll give you an example why. So when my mom was diagnosed with cancer as a kid, 
I thought, you know, and I'm going with her to these treatments. And so she's going and getting chemotherapy. She's throwing up in a bucket. All of her hair is falling out. And then for the next 10 years after those treatments, like my entire high school and college, I remember my mom would just be exhausted all the time. I mean, my mom was one of those moms. I mean, she just, she worked and she was a mom and she was a wife. She did all these things and she was just worn out. And so I remember seeing sort of the devastating effects of conventional medical treatments early on and thinking, hey, here's what I thought. I thought there has to be a better way. And so I think I was aware of that very early on. And then eventually when I went on and started studying more of these practices of natural medicine in school for that, by the way, when I was about to open my clinic that same year, my mom was diagnosed with cancer again. And this time we decided to go through a whole, a whole natural protocol. And I'd been really blessed to be able to study under a doctor who was practicing functional medicine at the time. And so I had learned about, you know, a lot about nutrition. In fact, I started working as his, his nutritionist before I graduated to become a doctor. And so I ran all this blood work. We would do micronutrient tests and fatty acid profiles and microbiome tests and heavy metal profiles, all the stuff. And we would look at all those things. And so when my mom got that diagnosis, we decided to take care of her all naturally. We started juicing vegetables and doing bone broth and a lot of herbs like turmeric and astragalus and a lot of these mushrooms and, and her body healed. I mean, it was amazing. We went back after four to six months and redid a CT scan. And I remember the doctor's exact words because he called my mom and he said, what have you been doing? She shared it. He goes, well, this is highly unusual. We don't typically see this, but your tumors have shrunk by more than half. We want to see you again here in the next year. She went back then in complete remission. So my mom, my mom now is in her seventies, the best shape of her life. And so, you know, I think when you were able to experience that, that's big. And I'll also say, I grew up in a household of faith. Like we prayed and it integrated very early for me because of my family and having my faith growing up and being able to see my mom's miraculous recovery. And you know, now that I've had time and you're gonna be much in line with this, it's like, now that I've looked at the research on neuroplasticity and just really what happens when we think about healing versus not, I mean, and the way that this sort of mind body connection, you know, there are so many examples of this, but if you even study the placebo effect, I mean, it's the amount of times the placebo effect has outperformed or equally performed the medication or the supplement or whatever you're taking, it's tremendous. And so we know that the mind is powerful. And then you read the Bible, it's a similar thing. If you read the Bible, I mean, Life and death is in the power of your tongue, just speaking, literally your health, your life you know, is life and death. So, so I think, it, you know, the combination of my faith and ex this experience with my mom were two big things. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's hard to believe we're already into summer when life goes by so fast. It's important to take a moment to pause and check in. What do you want to celebrate so far from the year? And what are some adjustments you might want to make for the rest of the year? Therapy can help you take stock of your progress and set achievable goals for the next six months. You might want to think about your family, your friendships, your personal goals, where do you feel like you're making progress and where do you feel like you might be able to use some help? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. This summer, take a moment. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Best of You today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash best of you. Do the men in your life always complain about the nicks, cuts, and irritation from cheap razors? Well, you've got to meet Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that is bringing precision engineering to men's shaving experience. 88% of men experience irritation from shaving, yet Henson users have seen dramatic improvements, including the disappearance of ingrown hairs and razor bumps. Henson's aerospace background has enabled the creation of razors with unmatched precision. The Henson razor works with standard dual-edged blades to give your guy that old-school shave with the benefits of new-school tech. Once he owns a Henson razor, it's only about 3 to $5 a year to replace the blades. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash best of you to pick the razor for you and use code best of you to get two years worth of blades free with your razor. 
Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash best of you and use code best of you. The literature, the research on prayer, the efficacy of prayer, right? Secular research that you just do better. It doesn't mean you don't still need scientific interventions and medical interventions. But when you were talking about the limiting beliefs, there's such solid research in social psychology about self-fulfilling prophecies, where if we have sort of a negative mindset, right, toward relationships, when you sort of feel like people aren't going to like you or you feel like you're going to be rejected, you tend to create environments in which those things happen. It's just sort of the... To use the biblical metaphor, you know, we we tend to reap the kinds of seeds that we sow. And so that way that we think really does influence what happens, our outcomes. And Dr. X, you know, when I say this, you know, this is just like the quintessential, especially here in New England. I had a long journey with Lyme disease. Yeah, wow. And it was so interesting. And I still deal with the after effects. But what happened is the treatment, the onslaught of antibiotics created a whole separate set of issues. Yeah. And right now that is the harder thing in many ways for me to overcome. And I've had to shift my mind. And I want to ask you about this. Is it media? Is it advertising? I mean, I think of myself as a critical thinker, but why do so many of us buy into this idea that the pharmaceutical industry is really the only way to go? Because even me, you know, it's like, the antibiotics will knock it all out. Now, I did need antibiotics. I did. We do need these medical interventions. I want to be clear about that. And also, there was a point at which they started to do more harm than good. And then the only way now for me to heal those residual effects is exercise, interventions, all the things you're describing. I also think there's something there, at least in myself, I can only speak for myself, you know, that I want the magic pill. I want the thing that just makes it all go away and that it's harder in many ways to do the sort of the whole integrative approach of, yes, you need to eradicate the thing that's hurting you, but you also need to just beef up those natural supports, those natural things that God has given you through exercise, through food. So I wanted to share that with you. And I guess two questions in that. One is, why do we buy in so much to this idea that the pharmaceutical industry is the only way, whether it's depression, whether it's a complicated diagnosis? And then what's the balance where we do need the prescription and also we need so many of these other tools at our disposal? Yeah, so what I would say is I think it comes down to two big things. One is exposure. You know, we are exposed to pharmaceuticals on a constant basis. I mean, the U.S. and New Zealand are literally the only two countries that are allowed to run pharmaceutical advertisements. Now, because most other countries believe it's really a conflict of interest to try and sell a drug and run advertisements for those because of you don't want healthcare to be primarily a money-making industry. You want it to be more of an altruistic industry based on physicians having a heart for a patient. And the pharmaceutical industry and the advertising and the billions of dollars poured into that, it creates a real issue with that, a real conflict of interest. And so yeah. that's that's one of the big issues is that it's on TV, it's on advertisements. Most people are on them. In fact, 89% of people over the age of 65 are on at least one medication. The average woman starts their first medication, which of course is birth control, at 15 years old. So all that being said, it's just, it's in our social groups, it's on social media, it's all over the place. And so number one is, is there a greater exposure of that or other things? And so the exposure is incredibly high. The second thing, and I don't think I've ever heard anybody bring this up, but I think some of it has to do with certainty. You know, I think a lot of medical professionals are absolutely certain, and they're so trained for four years, well, 12 years in a lot of cases and, and more, of this is the thing. This is the only cure. This is the only way. This is the only thing you can do, okay? So I think when you're talking to somebody and they have this level of certainty, and it's they've been sort of elevated as this is the highest. I mean, I would say, you know, if somebody were to ask, what is the highest position you can hold in terms of an authority of any profession? I mean, name something higher than a medical doctor, maybe a rocket scientist, but still not even then, really. That's not true. It really is. So I think there's a level of certainty that's there as well. So I think those are the big reasons. And I think we've actually created this sort of appearance that medicine is superior than nutrition and things that are holistic. Like somehow they've cracked a scientific code that we could never reach with. And what's crazy is when you look back at medicine, now this is still true today. One third of all medications today, those compounds originally came from plants and now they're synthetic. 
So for instance, like metformin comes from lilacs and aspirin comes from birchwood. So medicine itself actually came from nature, but now they've been able to synthesize it. So now it's stronger and cheaper, essentially. But I think those are some of the biggest issues. Now, in terms of what should the balance be? You know, my opinion is going to be stronger than some, and it's going to be maybe lesser than some. But but my opinion is that probably 90% of medications are unnecessary today. And the reason I throw that number out there is that and that number could be higher, it could be a little lower, but I do think that certain conditions, let's say ADHD, let me give an example. When I was a kid and I had bad ADHD, like, like they would have diagnosed me with severe ADHD and I got prescribed Ritalin and Adderall. And, and so I, I know this, but if my mom would have put me in a soccer game or a video game or gave me a book I liked, I was sucked in. Nobody could focus better than me. And when my diet changed, my hyperactivity went 100% away, 100%. Mm -hmm. So all that being said, what I really believe the way the medical profession should work is you have somebody come in with high cholesterol or diabetes. Let me, I've helped hundreds of people reverse type two diabetes. Now the people I don't know, it's probably higher than that. But that being said, you know, they would, patients would come in and I would say, okay, we're going to put you on a diet and it's not really a diet. We're, we're going to have you eat a lot of meat and vegetables. Okay. That's the diet, meat and vegetables. We're going to get some good fiber. That's the diet. I'm going to have you start walking. If you can lift weights, great. But if not, let's just walk three times a day for 20 minutes. And I'm going to give you some supplements. I'm going to give you chromium picolinate. I'm going to give you bayberry, which now is the extract is called berberine. I'm going to give you cinnamon and maybe some fenugreek. Okay. And let's do that. And let's see what happens. 90% mm -hmm. of the time, and this isn't an over-exaggeration. If you bring me a diabetic and I do that with them versus you bring somebody that's practicing conventional medicine, the 90%, who is going to have a better outcome 10 years from now? I mean, almost every time those patients reverse their type 2 diabetes, this isn't an exaggeration. I mean, it's just, it's this the reality of what happened. And so I really think that's the sort of thing that should happen when patients come in. Now, I think the other big side of things, I believe that probably close to 80% of diseases should also be treated with emotional, spiritual, and mental support because this is well known in Chinese medicine. Every condition has a emotional, mental component. For instance, if somebody has high blood pressure, that's so much stress related. I mean, it's almost always anxiety or anger. Those emotions cause that blood pressure to spike. If somebody has worry, they'll get an upset stomach. That affects the upper GI. So we know that affects that grief. If you are holding on to something from the past and haven't let it go, that affects the immune system. A lot of anger and bitterness, resentment and unforgiveness, that affects the liver. Now, I'm just quoting Chinese medicine here. And we know, and here's another prime example, fear. That affects the adrenal glands. Everybody knows that, right? Your body puts out more cortisol and adrenaline and these stress hormones. And so we know that based on different types of emotions you experience, they affect different organ systems. And so to me, if somebody comes in and they've got a condition, you name it, if we treat it the right way with diet and lifestyle and then bring in that emotional mental component of addressing that issue, people heal. And so my point there is, is that I don't think there's, we should do away with medications. I think that that should be the first line of defense for as long as possible. And if then, if somebody's not experiencing a breakthrough, then, Hey, let's get them on a medication for the short a time as possible, but let's use it then. And of course there's emergency medicine, which I think we're doing actually a pretty good job of, right? You fracture your femur in half and you're in the ER. Well, hey, do what you're typically doing there for the most part. But I guess that's my opinion on that. Yes. Why do we so quickly jump to the synthetic medicine versus looking at the lifestyle, the whole picture? Our dogs love Sundays. I'm not kidding. One of our dogs was the slowest eater on earth for the first several years of her life. It was painful how long it would take her to eat. The minute we introduced her to Sundays, she just laps it up. She loves it. Sundays is healthy dog food that's easy to store and serve. Most foods are one or the other, but Sundays is both. It's fresh dog food made from a short list of human-grade ingredients that contains 90% meat, 10% superfoods, and 0% synthetic nutrients. But unlike other fresh dog food, it doesn't require refrigeration or preparation. It's air-dried, so you simply pour and serve. It's so easy. Get 40% off your first order of Sundays. Go to sundaysfordogs.com slash best of you or use code best of you at checkout. I love that I can get my favorite purely Elizabeth granola auto shipped to my front door every month along with my favorite seventh generation 
paper products. Thrive Market only allows trusted top quality ingredients while restricting over a thousand harmful ingredients like artificial flavors, high fructose corn syrup, and more. Whether you're looking for organic kid snacks, low sugar alternatives, or high protein essentials, you can curate your own shopping experience with just a few clicks and trust that you're getting quality products so you can shop worry-free. When you join Thrive Market, you are also helping a family in need with their one-for-one membership matching program. You join, they give. Save time and money and shop Thrive Market today. Go to thrivemarket.com slash best of you for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash best of you. Thrivemarket.com slash best of you. When we bring this back to this idea of mindset, of limiting beliefs, I have a lot of medical folks in my family, and one of the things they all talk about that is so much of it is trying to get the patient, and I'll put myself in this category, to understand this more holistic, to understand and to believe, right? You can tell me all day long that I need to change my diet or I need to do this exercise, right? But I have to do it. I have to go do it. It's this relationship between you and your patient, right? That is discerning. There's there's all these biblical qualities, discernment, wisdom, you know, being a healer, right? You're walking with your clients and so and your patients. And so just like me as a therapist, I have to try to work with the mind, right? I can tell you this all day long, but you have to leave my office and go and implement some of these micro changes, even micro changes, right? And so how do you, as you've worked with patients over the years, how do you work with them on these mindset issues? Do you have tools or, and I know that's where this book came from in many ways, right? Is to walk us through them, but how have you learned, you know, how we can be our own worst enemies (laughs) and how we can actually though harness the power of our minds? You know, what are some of the, the tricks and tools to help us kind of buy into this more holistic, empowered, really, way of managing our health. Yeah, well, I'd say it's two things, and I think this is very biblical in its foundations, and it's really leveraging pain and pleasure. This is something many of the top psychologists do today. It's something that I've really done when I worked with patients or help people with with other areas of their life. And so I'll give you an example of this. If we go back in the Bible and, and look at what God says, how we should look at him One of the quotes that comes to mind is, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And the word fear is actually used constantly in the Old Testament, especially in terms of how we should view God. Now, the word fear there is, it's not always necessarily the sort of fear that we think about, this sort of like huddling in the corner where we're fearful of being burned up. But it is partly that. But it's also, in addition, it's this reverent awe and wonder and awe of just wow, God, you are so big and so great. And so I think one is, though, it's it's fear and it's pain. You want to use that for your good. And the other is pleasure. And this is really tied to, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Like, it's this idea of love. It's more of the positive. But you want to leverage both the negative and the positive to help yourself change. And so the way that I like to do this with patients or even myself is show them to pass. Here's what's at stake, Right. You know, if you decide to stay on your same diet with type 2 diabetes, okay, and you're not going to make any changes whatsoever, I just want you to know the likely consequences, okay? And we could just use data to show this. It's likely going to cause nerve degeneration where you could lose your foot or you're going to have trouble walking. You're going to feel very poor in this way. It also leads to heart disease. It also leads to, you know, a decreased lifespan. I mean, you know, you could go and show, and I want you to go a step further and think about how that's going to affect your family. You know, think about how that's going to affect your kids. So you actually want to create pain for them, more pain. Because what happens is, this is true with everything in life. Our awareness is tied very closely to our ability to grow in an area. Like, you look at the people that are very spiritually strong. You know, if, if you, when you get around a lot of pastors or priests or rabbis, they have this serenity to them. Like, it's hard to almost upset them or get them off because they have spiritual awareness, Right. And it's very high emotional IQ and so or emotional intelligence. And so, but it's the very same thing with body and your life. The people that I see have the best health have a very high physiological IQ. They know what's going on in their body. They can start to tell, like they become more aware. And if somebody isn't aware, like most people have not thought about, well, what's the outcome if I don't reverse my diabetes or if I don't do the right treatment? 
right? People don't become aware of that. Like people do it with cancer. You know, they're told that you could die. So it's, but with diabetes, they don't say, well, you're going to die tomorrow. So my point there is, is I, I say, hey, here's the likely outcome. Now, here's the other outcome. If you make these changes, write down, like, what are the things that you most want in this world? Is it to be at your daughter's wedding or your granddaughter's wedding? Is it to bring your kid? We did this with my mom, by the way. I did this exact same thing I'm sharing with you. She said, I want to bring my, my grandkids to Disney World in my 70s. You know what my mom's doing today? She's actually, I just talked to her. She's picking up my niece and nephew, nephews, three of them, and they're going to Disney World this week, okay? So I think that that really being able to help people gain a greater level of awareness of the outcomes and tie pain and pleasure to those things based on what they really want, their desires in life, gives us at least a better shot. Yeah, it's the big picture, right? It's the big picture. It's seeing the big picture. This is more than just take a pill, this will go away. You know, it's really understanding there are choices. There are some things we don't have control over, but there's a lot that we do. And what do we have control over? And I love what you're saying. It's there are two paths, you know, here's one and here's the other. And why wouldn't we do what we can within our control to choose the path that we want that but you are, you're hitching that. And I imagine you walk people through this in the book because there's a sort of future self. There's a sort of future self exercise I hear in that. Imagine, visualize, see what you want to be doing. We don't do that enough. What do you actually want 20 years from now? Yes. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, you know, one of the exercises I have people do in the book, uh, Dr. Allison, is I have them go, it's a process I call visualization to realization. And I've had so many people who've, who have started reading the book. I've had several people say there are a few exercises in the book and things that just radically change their life. But one of those is this process. And so what I have people do, actually, there's one step before visualization, and that is prioritization. A lot of people haven't really thought about, this is exactly what my life should look like. Some people might say, well, I want this second home, or I want this. Like, like we have these a lot of financial goals, but we haven't really thought about, okay, I want to make sure I'm in my 70s, bringing my kids to Disney World. I want to set it up to where my kids want to come back for the holidays and whatever it is, right? So people haven't really oftentimes thought about what are my biggest priorities in life? What matters most? Because all the time we sacrifice our time with our family for other things or our faith. And so I'd start with that. The next is visualizing it very clearly. You know, my wife and I actually were able to do this. It was amazing. So we got married down in uh, a little place in Florida. It was called 30A. It's where the Truman Show was filmed. It's around Panama City Beach in Destin, Florida. And the day after we got married, we did a mini honeymoon there. And we were riding around in bikes. It's this big neighborhood. And, we, and I said, it'd be so cool to have a home here one day. And so we went back and I said, you want to do a vision board? So we made this vision board and I went online and did a search for the neighborhood was called watercolor. And so I looked up watercolor homes and I found one I liked. I'd never seen it before, put it up there. So step one is we want to prioritize. So we talked about, you know, having family time here and all kinds of stuff. So then we visualized and then we wanted to strategize. Well, how would we make this a reality? So we said, okay, well, let's start setting aside for us. We were able to do a thousand dollars a month and then more over time. And so we started saving towards getting a house there. And then we just created it as a system. It just automatically came out of the bank account. Wasn't this fun? Well, five years later, we weren't in the position yet. We were still a few years off, but we were in the same neighborhood with my in-laws on these little bikes going around. And I had this idea and I looked over to my father-in-law, Joel, and I said, hey, what if we go in together and we, we get a house or we get this lot because we found this perfect lot, our dream lot down there. And they said, hey, we're in. And so we decided we bought this lot and I was at my house. This was the next week and I was recording a podcast. And I remember right before I was looking up and I was looking at my vision board and I thought, there's something so familiar about that house on my vision board. And by the way, there are thousands of houses in this neighborhood, thousands. And I realized that the lot we bought was next door to the house on my vision board. In fact, part of the picture was the lot. And it's just crazy. And we've been praying about this for years. We've been, and listen, visualization isn't just about getting, you know, a lot in your favorite vacation neighborhood, but really it was just, it was such a powerful reminder that when you go through the right process and the Bible talks so much about visualization, I mean, God says, listen, look at the stars of your sky, Abraham, so numerous shall your descendants be. And so for me, I think that this is a really powerful exercise people can go through. And I go through really in detail in the book of how to do that. Some other people that have been able to do that and birth their dream business or write their dream book or create their dream family environment or heal from a condition. Yeah, it's really powerful. And we're not taught that. I'm glad you tied that to scripture because 
There is the, like, again, that sort of woo-woo version of that that we can see out in the culture, but... The manifesting word, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's also science behind it. And to me, the biblical component of it that we're not often taught, because here's the thing, when you do that, my husband and I have been doing a lot of this about sort of, you know, we're, we're hitting an empty nest. What do we want our lives to look like when we're 80? You align your dreams and your hopes with the reality. And here's the other thing, even in your story... There is some cost on the front end. You have to put some savings away or for health. For me, we started to realize I want to be healthier. I want to do this work for a really long time. And there's a cognitive distortion, a thinking trap in my mind that's like, I don't have time to exercise because I've got so much work to do. But the truth is, if I don't make time to care for my body and exercise and do these things that I need to do to heal, I'm not going to have that 20 years, like your mom, like you're saying, you're not going to be taking the kids. And so when you start to really think practically and wisely and align what you long for with the truth, you know, there can be some short term, we have to delay gratification, we have to do these things. We, We start to work with the grain, though of how God designed us with the grain. And that's what I hear in that. You you still have to take some steps in there to achieve that goal. You went to your father and like, you know, and also though, if you hadn't taken some time to really prayerfully consider the life that you want, you can't create it. It's so powerful. One of the things I always do, Dr. Allison, as well, is I, I will picture and visualize those things based on the priorities that I have. But then I always recheck with God and I say, God, Make sure I have my priorities straight. And if you have a better vision, I'm going to sit here. But what's maybe something more clearly you can show me? And so I always invite God in that process. I love that. I love that. It's a partnership with God. Tell us, Dr. X, you do so much. You've got this book. You've got a practice. Tell us how my listeners can find you and all the different things you have to offer. Yeah. Well, I'll say one of the things that I know we started the show with is overcoming these limiting beliefs. I mean, this is something that radically changed my life. I mean, when I say that I believe that changing one single limiting belief can absolutely change someone's life, a lot of people listening to this might be one limiting belief away from that dream relationship, one limiting belief that's keeping them from great health, one limiting belief that's keeping them from, you know, uh, that thing that they've been dreaming about. And so that's why I wrote this book. And by the way, we didn't get into this, but a year and a half ago, I had a spinal injury. Uh, because of a medical mistake. I went in to get something really natural, actually naturally done. And then my my disc and my bone got infected while doing it. And so I didn't walk for a year. In fact, this time last year, I wasn't walking. And so, and I was told by a doctor that I might never walk again. And so I wrote this book while I was in bed. I was in this place where I was told, I went from having great health, I may never walk again. And I said, I, I wanna write something that will help people experience a breakthrough using mindset medicine is what I called it. And so I really did that in this book. And I think if anybody's looking for a breakthrough, this this is such an amazing book to, to check out. And if people go to joshax.com and get the book there, or you can go to Amazon, buy it, and then go to joshax.com, I have hundreds of dollars worth of free bonuses. People get the workbook. They'll also get a mindset masterclass, a whole masterclass that's worth hundreds of dollars there, and loads of other. We have a bonuses attached, audio interviews from some amazing people like Erwin McManus and lots of lots of people that people would recognize. And so if people want to take advantage of that for the next couple of weeks, they can go to joshax.com, get the book, and you'll get it on Amazon, plug in the code, and you'll get hundreds of dollars worth of free bonuses. The book is called Think This, Not That, because there are all these things that we think all the time that are leading us down a destructive path versus I teach people, hey, think this. And if you do, you're going to have that outcome that you've dreamed of. And so people can check out the books, Think This, Not That. Also have a podcast, which I know you're likely going to be on here in the future. And so that's the Dr. Josh Axe Show. I cover a combination of health content, but also a lot of mindset content as well there. So they can check out the podcast, the Dr. Josh Axe Show. And then I'm on the social channels at Dr. Josh Axe. But uh, I want to say, Dr. Allison, thanks so much for having me. I'm a huge fan of what you do because again, as we've talked about, I'm such a big believer in mindset and biblical psychology for healing. And so again, it's been a real honor to be on today. Thank you again. I'm so grateful for what you're doing, all the people that you're helping. I'm so grateful that you're so healthy. I can see you right now in front of me. You're up and moving around. You did it. You overcame. Oh, yeah, Thank yeah you. that's amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Check out Think This, Not That. That's right. Think This, Not That. Yeah, Amazon.com, bookstores nationwide, but you can also get it at joshax.com. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Axe. 
Thank you for joining me for this week's episode of The Best of You. It would mean so much if you take a moment to subscribe. You can go to Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen to podcasts and click the plus or follow button. That will ensure you don't miss an episode and it helps get the word out to others. While you're there, I'd love it if you leave your five-star review. I look forward to seeing you back here next Thursday. And remember, as you become the best of who you are, you honor God, you heal others, and you stay true to your God-given self.